Hello everyone, this is Raven here with a new update today on the patch changes and balance changes of the uh, new update coming out on the 10th of August for the Norskin update and the DLC coming out. So I said the patch changes would be out tomorrow and I said I would do a video tomorrow. So here I am, here they are, so let's get to it. So down here, it's just a, like a little bit of fluff talking about the Norskin incursion, all that stuff that's coming out and the 30th anniversary of CA. So congratulations to them being around 30 years. I've been around with them since... Uh, they came out with the Spartan Total Warrior game back on the PS2 or whatever. I love that game. And uh, as you can see, they came out with 30 uh, units of renown. So, uh, you know, each race already had six of them, but there's five of them that didn't have so six. So, you know, six times five is 30. And it just happens to be their 30th anniversary. So I'm not sure if they planned it out. <laughs> they might have. We would have to ask CA. It's pretty sneaky, though, if they did. That's pretty funny. Uh, Chinese translation, so good for anybody in China that can now play it in their own native language. So now we're going to take a look at the Warriors of Chaos design changes. So uh, we went over most of this yesterday in that video, so if y'all want to take a look at that, y'all can. Uh, really, the most of the, the biggest things, though, I just want to look at are just these th these three things right here. So uh, they reworked end fighting. Now only Marauders suffer from end fighting when two Chaos armies are too close together. Everything else will not. So thank God. I fucking hated that so much. Day one, I installed a mod that completely took out end fighting from chaos factions when playing as campaign mm, excuse me had a birth there uh i completely i hated it so much i was like i can't have two armies close together and i had to take this like 20 stack on top of a city with only 20 units i'm like mm, no that's not happening definitely not especially at low tiers and like you just have to like completely avoid the dwarf. uh excuse me avoid the dwarfs or you'd just be massacred if you didn't have the right army composition so i was very oh, i'm just so happy with that change thank you thank you ca thank you so now, defeating a Norskin faction will also make them more susceptible to becoming your vassal. So they kind of talked about that a little bit, and I did too yesterday. So just uh, the Norskin uh, mechanic of whenever you beat the lord and leader of a faction, they're they're more likely to subjugate to your will. So good stuff. Now we can take a look at the um, raise and loot or raise uh, ability. So it provides growth and replenishment or chaos favor respectively. So, uh, you know getting more uh, troop back and getting uh, more growth for your hordes to try and be able to expand your main settlement to be able to build more stuff or be able to get uh, chaos favor. So we'll see how this chaos favor plays out for chaos. We'll, we'll have to see what they can do with that. So now chaos encampments reduced unit upkeep by a greater amount. So I talked about that yesterday, but now they're saying that maxed out hordes in many cases can become self-sustaining. So this to me says that they're either going to zero out in uh, terms of how much something costs or possibly go into the positives for uh, money gained each turn whereas in, in previous patches uh, up till now you know you're losing several thousand gold every turn just trying to deal with two or three armies and it's just really really hard to deal with sometimes if you're not able to constantly be running around and sacking stuff although you do get like a ludicrous amount of money every single time you sack and uh, loot a settlement but you know it just puts a lot of pressure on you to keep playing at your very peak when sometimes at Legendary, you know, your units just get so beaten up and it's just like, I have to be so careful and you just don't have the time to be careful anymore, you know what I'm saying? So that's always good. Empire start position overhaul, we already talked about that. They get the four cities now, so it's going to make the AI a lot stronger. Uh, players playing the campaign will still have to gather all four cities themselves, so that's whatever. The Wood Elves do get several new uh, followers for their lords and heroes to benefit from. They don't say what they are, unfortunately, but I'm very glad it isn't just two, which was the uh, Young Stag and Vols Anvil Smith, but, you know, that one was pretty cool, and the Young Stag's all right, I guess. It's plus five leadership for your whole army just for a follower, so that's always nice. Uh, new Legendary Lord campaign effects. So the only ones that they didn't cover yesterday were Malagor, Vanfred, Kazrak, and then, uh, let's see, Thorgrim here as well, and Bark Volkmar the Grim, and Sigvald the Magnificent. Actually, we'll just go over them. So, Volkmar the Grim gets a better magical item uh, increased drop chance, so, you know, that's always nice. Uh, let's see, Thorgrim gets uh, either the new hammers he recruits are going to be a higher rank than they typically would be, or they're just going to increase XP very nicely. I don't know. It's just kind of increase in rank over time. Uh, over here, see, Archaeons, uh, Colec, army suffers an increased chance of being ambushed, so that's, that's rather unfortunate, you know, I hated getting ambushed because it immediately puts you at a huge disadvantage, and sometimes it's, it's life or death if you're a horde army like Colec is for the, for the Warriors of Chaos, so that's, 
it is what it is. Sigvald the Magnificent over here does have a diplomatic bonus with the Norsecan tribe, so make it even easier to vassalize them, whatever. Uh, Kazrak One Eye increases charge bonus of Bestigor herds, awesome, love that. Gains diplomatic bonus with the Beastman War herds with Malagor over here, and Manfred increases the XP of newly recruited Grave Guard and Black Knight, so making them even stronger off the bat as soon as he gets them. So awesome, very good stuff. Carl Friends here, so very basic stuff. I'm going to be seeing a lot of this uh, throughout several different armies, except, except for a few things. So, best of the Empire, all lords he, he recruits has a plus one root recruit rank. So, now they'll be recruited at rank four because he already recruits them at rank three because of this. So, that's nice. Then, all spearmen, swordsmen, free company, and halberdiers get plus five leadership. And then down here, Imperial Special Forces, Reichsguard get a plus 5 bonus versus large and plus 4 melee attack, which makes them extremely good, because Reichsguard have very good armor, giving them a bonus versus large and a higher melee attack chance. It's just That's going to make them extremely devastating in combat versus other cavalry, because a lot, of, a lot of units have a really tough time dealing with their armor. Like Wild Riders, I think, do lose 1-on-1 -on -one versus Reichsguard, because they just can't handle that armor, even though Reichsguard don't have as much damage versus them. Uh, but now they, they might with that bonus versus large, who knows, and the better melee attack. So they'll definitely be shutting down wild riders and stuff like that. A lot heavier than they used to. And uh, boar boys and all that kind of stuff like that should not be a problem for the Reichsguard. So very good stuff for Carl Franz. Be seeing a lot more cavalry out of him in the low tiers, especially uh, before you get to the uh, Dibby Grip Knights, which are very expensive, but so very, very, very worth it. You know, so good. Very good. So I think they also get a 20% word save. Once you get to a certain technology and the Empire skill tree, I can't really remember. I'm pretty sure they do, though. Now we'll take a look down here at the Emperor's Men. Great Swords get plus 5 leadership and plus 7 armor. So that's pretty outstanding. Putting up to 102 armor, I believe it is. And then Heroic Knightly Band, you can get uh, Empire, Capt Empire Captains at uh, level 3, excuse me, right off the bat as soon as you get them, and you can recruit one more of them. And then all units in Karl Franz's army come at a plus 2 uh, uh, rank as soon as you get them and have a minus 5% upkeep. And Karl Franz over here is just going to become an absolute monster with the and uh, excuse me an emperor's journey is what's going to transform carl friends into an absolute monster so giving him unbreakable while he's on uh you know death claw <laughs> that's just going to be horrifying all right so terror unbreakable plus 10 percent weapon strength so he's going to be in the 500s probably i don't, I don't actually know but he's going to be a he's going to be a monster it's going to be horrible to deal with carl friends if you're not actually playing him so we'll see how that works out it's going to be good for him Gelt over here. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. Look at this. The golden face mask. So, plus 20 armor. All units in Gelt's army get plus 6 armor. So, I'm not sure if he actually gets the benefit from that. But if he does, that's plus 26 armor for a mage. That's good stuff. Especially for him trying to run around on his Imperial uh, Pegasus. Just trying to flee from everything. Because, you know, he can't stand up to anybody. Everybody beats him in a fight. So, that's unfortunate. But he, he does cast a lot of magic. And he will build to a lot more down here. As you can see, metal to gold magic. Plus 25 uh, wins of magic power reserve and plus 7% income to local provinces. So that's always good stuff. Then down here, I'll take a look at this new formulation. So Gout's army, the Pistoliers, Free Company, Outriders, and Handgunners. So everything pretty much regarding to uh, sh uh, shooting people uh, <laughs> with, uh, you know, your... Uh, Black Powder units are going to be getting that plus 6% ammo and plus 6% missile damage, so very good stuff. And the additional Orb of Sorcery, so Luminarch and Steam Tanks both get a plus 10% missile damage bonus. Uh, Luminarch gets one or two extra shots with that plus 10% ammo, and the Steam Tank become even tankier with a word save of plus 8%, so good save, good stuff for him. Excuse me? I always said uh, good save for him, but you know, definitely not definitely not a saying at any for anybody. So uh, down here, Renowned Scholar, so Wizard's Minus 10% uh, hero action cost, and you can get one more of them, so very nice stuff for that. And plus 10% research rate, so, you know, always good to be able to research stuff as fast as possible and make your units as good as possible. Ungrim Iron Fist down here, though, in campaign. This is going to be pretty major. So, determined death blow. Triggers at 50% HP or lower, plus 24% weapon damage, or plus 16% AP damage. That alone sounds horrifying. But then you go down here... <laughs> To the extremely daring death blow. So it's one or the other. Now it triggers at 20% HP or lower, which which can certainly happen. Going up against some green scans and they're like, here's a giant, deal with this, Ungrim. You know, very good damage coming out of giants against heroes and stuff like that, or Arachnorak queens, or Gorbuls being sucked onto your 
uh, heroes and lords by the beast bin. So very, very good damage can come to your lords. So if, if he can survive, which he can, because he can go below 20% HP because he is unbreakable, he can get plus 44% weapon damage, plus 36% AP damage, and plus 30% physical resistance on top of like 120 armor or whatever he has currently. Whew. That's that's a lot. That's a lot to deal with. He's going to be in like the 600 to 700 damage range and probably have like four to 500 or 600 AP damage on top of that, plus 30% physical resistance. That's going to be stupid. It's going to be absolutely terrifying because if he's at 20% HP, I can't imagine what the other end is going to be looking like because he's already a horrible combatant to try and fight against. He's going to be absolutely tearing up anybody that comes in contact with him. Giving him this huge buff is going to make him a monster. A true Slayer indeed. Slayer King for sure. <laughs> so great nemesis. So plus 15% weapon damage against all these factions for, uh, for himself. So good for him. So doing even more damage. So Norska, Chaos, Undead, or Greenskin. So whatever. Whatever. Oh, had a hard enough time dealing with him with Manfred if he got in contact and getting away in the first place. But then imagine him with this buff and then this buff down here too. That'd just be horrifying. Oh god. Uh, plus 30% casualty replenishment for all slayers and himself. And rune, wound recovery time of minus 2 for himself. So that's nice. Uh, ancient bloodline down... Ancient bloodline excuse me for a thorgrim grudge bear down here plus 15 percent growth plus 15 growth plus three public order and plus two reduction in vamp vampire and chaos corruption and local provenance stuttering a lot today sorry y'all and the elite enforcer so long beards and hammers cost less and then the uh you know hero recruit rank recap rank blah 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 fire support so thorgrim's army the artillery missile damage and ammo plus six percent for both of those so that's good do more damage and shoot more so always nice Master Engineer costs less, and you can get one more of them, but I don't ever use Master Engineers. They have amazing armor-piercing missile damage of like 330 or something like that. It's really good. Better than the uh, elves and their their missile lords and heroes, so it's very good stuff, but they just get line of sighted so much, and they can't see their targets that they're shooting at, and they just sit there, and more often than not, just don't fight, and they just provide encouragement for nearby units, so I just... But to me, that's a waste of money. I'd rather get somebody that's going to do tons of damage, like a Ruined Smith, and give lots of other buffs while still encouraging your uh, your allies. So down here, as you can see, uh, Ruined Smiths did get a little something-something. You can get one extra one of them, but you know, in the end, that's not a whole lot. Plus 7 research rate, income, plus 5% in local province, and then uh, Grudge Against Chaos. So Thorgrim's Army, uh, so it's actually going to be Chaos, Greenskins, Mankind, Vampire Counts, and Elves. Get plus 4 leadership and plus 5 melee attack whenever you research one of these uh, skill trees right here so uh, very good stuff and then uh, Krell is just gonna be an absolute monster now under Heinrich Kimmler I'm glad that they changed this up so the other day we took a look at him degrading at half speed and not degrading at all and the uh, black axe making him a little bit better in melee combat attacking wise but now the immortal challenge gives him the deadly onslaught and foe seeker so added charge bonus and uh, armor piercing damage of 18% for both and then foe seeker gives a like 24% speed and 24% vigor back, I think. I can't quite remember. And then on top of that, Quell, Krell, Quell, Krell gains 25% health and 10 melee defense. So this is going to make him an absolute tank, especially when combined with Eternal Bastion. He's going to be an absolute monster. He has so much HP, and the only reason he died so fast is because of the Kremble mechanic, mechanic for all the summoned units in the game. So... That's the only reason he died really fast, but now he's going to be surviving for a very long time with this added melee defense and 25% uh, HP, so very good stuff coming out of that. Uh, we already talked about the Lord of the Scourge and the Thrall's Master. You can go ahead and pause if you want to take a look at it. But now we're going to take a look at Grimgor Ironhide. So Grimgor's got an Ola Ardor and makes all the best boys even better, so that's always better. I love that. Or Orc speech, uh, excuse me, orc speech makes me very happy whenever CA does it or whenever I just hear it in the game because it's just so perfect for them. So Neva's second best, uh, plus two lord recruit rank for uh, Grimgore, so all lords will be plus three, uh, will be at level three, excuse me. And then a black orc wrecking ball, so black orcs are going to be stupid now for them. They already were pretty good. So now plus four percent, uh, plus four AP damage. And then plus six charge bonus and bigger and harder. So savage orcs and uh, just regular orc boar biggins. Uh, or just regular orc biggins, excuse me, not uh, boar boys, get plus 5 bonus versus large and plus 4 leadership. And then uh, Grimgore causes fear, gets plus 8% melee uh, HP and plus 16% speed and frenzy, which is going to help him out a lot in melee. So plus 12% weapon damage. Let's go ahead and take a look. Oops. Go here, take a look at that uh, weapon damage for him. Let's pull up green skin action right here. Where are they at? Down here. Alright, so take a look at Grimgore. Clear this out. 
So Grimgore is going to go up to, you know, plus 12% me melee damage, so that's always nice. So he's going to go up to about about 500 weapon damage right there, so that's nothing to sneeze at, especially when uh, in conjunction with that plus 8% HP and plus 15% speed and a fear. So he's going to be beating up a lot of people a lot better than he already did, so very good stuff, making him one of the best duelists in the game, hands down. So very good stuff, because he has so much AP damage, he just can take out anybody. So Wolfric the Wanderer, if y'all are wondering, uh, in fact, does not beat as, uh, excuse me, does not beat Grimgore one on one, and uh, he barely, barely beats Sigvald one on one with his uh, orc armor for the regeneration. So it's a very, very close fight for uh, Sigvald, but he gets absolutely dumpstered by uh, by Grimgore if he's on foot. If he's on a mammoth, obviously Grimgore is going to lose because you know I don't think Grimgore can handle twelve thousand HP. That's just me saying that though. Grimgore would say otherwise. So. Imbued by Madness, uh, Azag's army gets minus 8% attrition and minus 8 upkeep for orc boys, savage orcs, and orc and savage orc boar boys. And then they have the earth shaking orders. Azag's army gets plus 4 leadership for the orc boys, savage orcs, and orc savage orc boar boys. Plus 5 melee defense for the orc boys, savage orcs, and orc savage orc boys. Ah, oh my god, this tongue twisters for days, I tell you what. And then melee, uh, excuse me, missile damage of plus 8% for orc and savage orc air boys. I, I agree with this. That's, they needed that because they're so inaccurate, and uh, just giving that them, them that extra missile damage, excuse me, before they're engaged in combat is really good. Even though they do good in combat, but they have like 8 melee defense. I'm, I'm sure it's something terrible. I can't remember. They do good when they hit back because they have a weapon strength of 35, but their melee defense is 8, so... That's just so unfortunate. I can't help y'all there, but you know, at least you can hit back. They can't take a hit, but they can certainly give them out. Uh, so d just generally buffing up the army. Very good stuff coming out of Azag, making him very, very useful. Uh, shamans, plus two levels to initial recruitment, plus one to actual being able to recruit them. And then Azag with not orky enough, so I feel like this is coming from that crown of a... Uh, what, is, what is it actually called? I don't even remember what the crown's called. Let's take a look here. Oh, he doesn't... It's not going to tell me the crown. Oh, no, it's not going to tell me the crown's name. I forgot what the crown's name is, but I'm pretty sure it's the same crown that uh, uh, Manfred von Kar Karstein gets very later on from Azag, and it has uh, Vlad von Karstein's soul in it before he's resurrected, I'm pretty sure. Uh, if he ever gets resurrected, I can't actually remember, but uh, I feel like it's telling him that he needs to intercept everybody ever. So... Underway Beast Path and World Root Interception Chance of plus 12%, so great stuff for Azag right there. Enemy Siege Holdout Time of minus two turns, so making those sieges a little bit quicker, which is always nice in like really close situations where an army's coming from far away and you're just like, I really need to get this out of the way. So uh, Azag gains plus 10% or plus 10 charge bonus and plus four melee attacks, so that's good, making him a little bit stronger in combat. He wasn't that bad as in the beginning with the uh, Spider Banner. Uh, being able to be a pretty good duelist, but now he's going to be even better off the charge. And plus 15 Winds of Magic Power Reserve and Regeneration, so a lot more spells coming out of him. So Doom and Darkness, Fate of Buna, Spirit Leech, whatever, you know, you know, whatever fits your fancy for spells and stuff coming out of the Death Magic. So good stuff, though. So now Arcane, the Everchosen, Lord Recruit Rank. Uh, Chaos Warriors now cost less and uh, cost less to recruit and just cost less to keep. Uh, Chaos Chosen units, though. Now have plus six physical resistance and plus four melee defense under a con uh, Archaon's army. So let's let's actually just take a look real quick at that. Uh, so chosen, chosen, chosen. So let's see here. How much melee defense it was four? So these guys are going to be up to sixty-six melee defense, and that's without a single chevron. All the way chevroned up, which you'll see with a chosen unit quite often in campaign, will be up to uh, eighty. So, you know, because that plus four that they're going to get, they're going to have 80 melee defense. I think that's more than a dwarf. And I have all these tabs open because I was, uh, you're going to be looking at all the different stats for people coming up here. So, um, let's take a look here. Iron Breakers. Norgrimling, Norgrimling's Iron Breakers have 83. So, regular Chosen with shields are going to be almost as hard to kill as a Norgrim, Norgrimling's Iron Breaker unit. That, that makes me happy. But as you can see, uh, that's a lot of money if you're to do that in campaign or multiplayer. Wow, 1,800 for just a single unit of infantry. Wow. So, all right, all right, whatever. Is what it is. Plus four melee defense for them. 48, and then 56 over here. That's not bad over there for uh, these, these halberds. These halberds are actually gonna be really good in combat now. So, very good stuff, especially with that 6% uh, physical resistance. So, 
that's going to be a lot of physical resistance just because it can be so hard to hit with all that armor on a chosen unit with just the, the regular ones. So that's that's really good. I'm going to start using chosen a lot with Archaeon. So Knights of the Herald, Archaeon's army, plus 8% weapon strength and plus 8% movement speed for Chaos Knights. So they're going to get into combat pretty quick and do lots of damage because they, they already do pretty substantial damage in combat and they don't die very quickly because they have really good melee stats, uh, just like chosen pretty much. And then Distinguishable Champions, uh, your Exalted Heroes can get plus two levels, can recruit one more of them, and Ascension to Daemonhood for uh, for Archaeon himself. So plus 10% physical resistance, plus 15 winds of magic, and then plus two percent or plus two chaos corruption. Uh, let's see here, Eagle Maniac. So Sigvald's army, all of them get plus five leadership, but uh, all chaos lords and sorcerer lords. Uh, for other armies have t plus 25% upkeep because, you know, Sigvald the Magnificent is the most magnificent under uh, Slaanesh's eye, he would like to believe. He doesn't want anybody else in the spotlight, so being the ego maniac he is, you know, this, this seems very true to his word and how he is in the character uh, as far as lore is concerned. So good for him, making everybody else more expensive. So that's kind of shitty, though, but, you know, whatever. It's pretty thematic. Plus 3% melee defense. I think that just meant 3 not 3%, and then plus 3 melee attack, so that's good for him. Plus 4 armor, plus 3 melee defense again, so plus 6 melee defense overall, plus 3 melee attack, plus 4 armor. And then his whole army costs 5% less to keep up with, and gets plus 8% more income from post-battle loot and raising settlements. Born to serve, uh, heroes have plus 5% chance to succeed, and minus 5% chance to do something. Uh, I mean, minus 5% cost to do something, excuse me, and then he causes terror. So... So, like, how I was talking about how Sigvald lost the uh, duel against Wolfric the Wanderer one-on-one, -on -one, but barely. Now that he causes terror, it's it's probably going to drastically swing in Sigvald's favor as far as campaign's concerned. So, lords that he barely loses to, or barely beats, or loses to not, like, considerably, like, if you were to fight Grimgore, he's probably going to have a, a huge upper hand on because terror is very powerful, so... Let's see how that works. So before we get to Kolek's son either, let's just take a look at this. Dragon Ogre Shagos get plus 50 armor and Kolek gets plus 30 armor. Now this is just a general change. So overall, whether it's uh, in campaign or multiplayer, Dragon Ogre Shagos and Dragon Ogre, uh, excuse me, Kolek will be getting plus 30 and 50 armor. So Kolek will be at 80, Dragon Ogre Shagos will be at 100. So we all know that the Dragon, uh, Dragon Ogre Shagos, you know, the Three of them. It's, it's a it's a it's a trouble troubling time to deal with them, you know. Triple Sh Dragon Ogre Shagos. If I could say that one time without stuttering, that'd be amazing. Triple Dragon Ogre Shagos. That is a big deal sometimes for beatdown squads for dwarves or other uh, races. Just in general, it's a it's a big deal. Seeing them in online co uh, play for multiplayer is is really difficult to deal with. But now it's gonna be even more powerful because Colex, no joke now. 80 armor and like 6,000 HP pretty much, that's, that's a lot. Like he was already really good in my eyes. I've always really loved Colex Sun Eater, not just because he's so like fucking awesome to look at, but now because he's gonna be like a lot more tankier and he already has a pretty decent missile resistance of 25%. So adding armor to that and making these Dragon Ogre Shagos, like his little goon squad to follow him around even better, it's gonna be pretty painful. I feel like he, he can probably beat Dirt through one-on-one -on -one now. I'm not quite sure. We'll have to see how they stand up to things like the Mammoth and all that. So I feel like maybe that's like something that they're trying to do is cancel out the Mammoth by giving these guys more armor because Kolek does lose uh, pretty handily against a Mammoth with Wolfric the Wanderer on it or any Mammoth in general, I think, with the War Shrine or Feral and above. Uh, so let's go back up here. So yeah, in campaign though, he can also get plus 10 armor and, not, uh, and 8 magical resistance, so he'll be up to 90 armor. And then plus four uh, leadership when laying siege and minus two turns to enemy siege holdout time. Giant killer plus six bonus versus large, which puts which puts him up to thirty two I think or thirty four bonus versus large. Not the best, but plus six weapon damage, uh, plus six percent weapon damage. Excuse me. So you know on top of him already having five hundred and twenty, that's it's pretty pretty substantial. And then uh, his whole army gets plus four campaign movement range and casualty replenishment. So that's nice. And plus two uh, chaos corruption and then fucking frenzy. So. When, Ka when Kolek gets Frenzy on top of having this bonus with weapon strength right here, and then maybe this weapon strength bonus right here, I didn't even see that. Seismic Shock. So Kolek's army, 8% weapon strength for him, maybe, or 8% weapon strength for himself and the whole army, or just his army. We'll have to see. But plus 5% charge bonus for Dragon Ogres and Dragon Ogres Shagos on top of that uh, weapon bonus. 
It's gonna make them pretty powerful. So if you can actually get this 8% uh, weapon strength bonus, 6% weapon strength bonus, and a bonus versus large because most lords are uh, on some sort of mount, typically. If you can get that on top of the frenzy, that's gonna be uh, you know 18% extra damage plus another eight, so 26% extra damage and then plus six damage, just baseline. That's, whew, that's a lot. That's gonna be pretty ferocious. That's gonna put him probably into the, like the 600 range. Easy, 600 range, easy. And then if you brought this for plus 36 armor percent, 36% uh, armor piercing damage, that's gonna be a lot too. So probably putting him up to like seven or 800, that'd make him pretty nasty. Not to mention if you uh, give him any items for his uh, weapon or armor or uh, enchantments or whatever that make him just stronger overall. So we'll see how that works out. So balance changes. So like I already talked about, Dragon Ogres and Kolak getting more armor. Minotaurs now cost less overall. Cryptors cost more. Terragrass cost less. Forest Dragon cost less. So let's go ahead and take a look at those real quick. So uh, Beastmen. So now these guys are going to cost... Uh, 1200, 1300, and 1400 respectively, so I'm probably going to start seeing a lot more Minotaurs, that's pretty cool. I would hopefully like to see them anyways. And then Musion, so uh, Terror Geist is going to now cost 1800, Cryptors now cost 900, if we go to Argolon, Forest Dragon will now cost 17, 1700, which is now uh, only 100 more than a Tree Man, and I'm not sure if this is going to change how much they cost for your Lords uh, when they're getting that mount. Maybe they're going to cost like 650 now, or... Maybe the Great Eagle will cost less. I, I'm not sure. Maybe it'll stay the same because, you know, that's not too terribly expensive when you're putting a Lord on them. So we'll have to see how that works out. Eh, I mean, it's still still not the most expensive for a Lord on a Dragon, TBH. So especially because they can cause fear and they get that physical resistance of 20% and 70 armor on top of it having healing potions and stuff like that and being able to skirmish down people pretty effectively. These are really, really good, good Lords, so... It is what it is. Then we're going to take a look over here. Dwarf Cannon and Dwarf Bolt Thrower get 38 bonus versus large, 24 bonus versus large, and the cannon gets reduced calibration area to make it more accurate. So let's take a look at the dwarfs. So Cannon and Bolt Thrower. So let's see what their bonus versus large is right now. Bolt Thrower has a bonus versus large of nothing. Wow. Okay. I thought it did. I thought that's exactly what this was made for. It says anti-large. Hmm. I thought it'd be hilarious if they put it on the melee attack, but... <laughs> Alright, well, it doesn't actually do a bonus versus large, if y'all didn't know that. It's just... They say it's good bonus versus large, I guess, because it's just a single shot, and it's really, really accurate, so... Maybe that's what they meant from it, but it's so weak. So weak. Only 132 to 192 of the cannon. So, let's see. 38 bonus versus large for the cannon, but it's the cannon's pretty inaccurate, so... Uh, it doesn't actually have a bonus versus large at all, so... Puts it up to 230 damage and 24, so putting that up to 160 damage, so. Eh, more accurate, less accurate, more damage, less damage. Seems balanced down, ah, seems balanced out to me. I, I'm, I'm okay with that, you know, fine with that. I'm glad to start uh, seeing some more forest dragons in my armies, though, and I love bringing terror guys. That's, me personally, I love terror guys, I love minotaurs. And I bring Cryptors sometimes. I feel like I forget them a lot, though, as playing the Vampire accounts, even though they're so good. But I feel like this recruitment uh, cost was well needed way before this because uh, they've been good since patch one. So I don't know. We'll see how that works out. Um, hmm. Let's see, uh, co op campaign. Players can now head straight to quest battles instead of doing missions that can't, can, can't be completed. Uh, fix some patterns for the. Bretonian Knights, skinning issues with the medallion for the Beastmen, blah blah blah. Uh, better animation for the Hawk Riders, bug with Paladin Loss of Shield, Cynagors, or no, excuse me, Best Gores look better with their axes because they look misaligned. Uh, Pegasus Knights look better with their lances. Idle animation for the General Empire improved on the Hippogriff Mount. The Chaos Sorcerers can no longer, okay, so Chaos Sorcerers can no longer cast Syrian Dune twice in quick succession. That's nice. I didn't know about that, but glad that they fixed that. And I, somebody's abusing it somewhere, uh, not me, I don't know. <laughs> so, wider plows, technology in Britonia not correctly reduces the construction cost of infrastructure buildings. AI vampire accounts can no longer recruit regiments of renown. Uh, when you're the car signs, all right, that's okay, I guess. I don't mind seeing regiments of renown when I'm fighting people, so whatever. Uh, quest appears, which requires player to embed a hero. They can now use the unit exchange system to embed the hero. Cool. 
uh, fixed paint buttons from co-op campaign. Arcan now cast Fireball in range, goes into range, then casts it, okay? And then fix that crazy black uh, effect that kept happening on maps. Like, you just see, like, a whole, like, sections of the map just turn black and weird for some reason. And now undermorking no longer automatically leads to overgorking and vice versa. And the waxing and waning of the Morse Live may affect this. So, you know, that's pretty important to, to, to keep in mind. So, you know, orcs beware. Uh, you know, pretty important stuff. We're not. But, uh... <laughs> I love that CA does this. They, they've been doing stuff like this since their first patch. Like, in the first patch, I think they released something that's like, uh, goblins are now more ticklish. Like, it was just, like, it was just a shit ton of changes. There's just changes all across the board, all over the races, for every single unit, pretty much. It was just like, holy shit, there's so many patch notes, and it's just mixed in. Not at the very end, it was just like, like, say if we went to, like, right here, like, just somewhere in the middle, it was just like, oh, goblins are now more ticklish. Ah, huh, all right. <laughs> It didn't, it, no stat changes implied, just they're now more ticklish. It's good, good to know. So, uh, Archaon now gets Frenzy, plus 10 physical resistance. Sigval, plus 5 melee defense, plus 5 morale. Not sure where, the, where this is actually going. I feel like this is going into multiplayer. Um, pretty sure that's what they're talking about. So, Archaon with that added Frenzy and plus 10 physical resistance, that's pretty important. I, I, like, seeing, I like seeing that. He's going to do more damage and be more tanky, and now he's going to be a pretty substantial pick. Uh, not substantial, but pretty popular pick among the players in the multiplayer community because, uh, you know, he's not, not the best lord when you got people like Sartorial or Kolek, or I like to bring the Chaos Lord on the dragon, honestly, and just give him all this stuff because this makes him absolutely terrifying. Because, like, you can just give, like, Plus 22 weapon damage right here, plus 18% uh, armor piercing damage, and then plus another 22% weapon damage, and then plus 18% armor piercing damage. It, he hurts. He, he hurts a lot. Especially because he does fire damage, so if it's like a terror geist or something like that, like a Strigoi Ghoul King on a terror geist, and he gets caught in the air, and he has that weakness to fire, 20%, ooh, ooh, that hurts. It hurts a lot, just to think about hurts. So that's good stuff. I, I love doing that. But we'll start seeing maybe Archaon a little bit more. I might even bring him, might try and bring him in my next uh, Chaos video. I've, I've, I feel like I've never even used him in multiplayer, sadly. But that's just me. Uh, Sigval, plus 4% health. Grimgore, 5% uh, charge bonus and increased health by 5%. So pretty good stuff. He's going to be even better now. Prophetess has a minus 150 cost. So let's go ahead and take a look at Bretonia. I feel like nobody understands what Prophetesses are. So... Uh, obviously people do, but they just never get brought. So Prophetess of uh, Life, let's bring her. And we can put her on a Royal Pegasus. So now she can fly, has a movement speed of 105. She'll cost 150 less base. So already just going to cost uh, 114. And then probably get rid of most of these spells. I might even get rid of that. So she would be costing pretty... She would be costing nothing. So 1,320 for a Laura Life caster like that. Even less. Let's see. This is probably how I would use her. Maybe this. So, 1,313. Or 1,300, or excuse me, 1,523. So, either way, that's pretty much what you'd be seeing for her cost now. So, that's that's pretty nice because, you know, Fae Enchantress, Fae Enchantress is pretty good. Um, let's see. This is how I set her up. Let's see. That's fine. So she's going to cost 115 more now. So she's going to be uh, 1,679, something like that. 69. Oops. Let's go back to this. Uh, I meant to go back to here. So that's that's kind of important, kind of not. Not a big change, honestly. 154 lord isn't a whole lot. Wyvern mounts now, though, have uh, added poison tax. So your orc boar bo or orc war bosses, excuse me, now on wyverns do poison damage, and regiments of renown have a 10 cooldown period, so 10 turns of cooldown after being killed or disbanded, so I'm sad to see this go because I like to abuse it, because um, when I was the dwarves, and you're just making so much money, and you're like, oh shit, this one city is about to get taken by this one army anywhere on the map, you just spawn a lord, and then you're like, alright, I'm just gonna recruit a full army of regiments of renown, and then just immediately disband them after winning this battle. And I do that all the time. So now, uh, abilities right here. Earthblood upgraded. Uh, Earthblood and the upgraded version have been halved in duration to 7 seconds and 14 seconds, respectively, when I believe they were 14 and 21. I think. I can't quite remember. Let's take a look. We have the current patch right now, so uh, let's take a look here. Live. So let's see here. Um, last 14 seconds, last 28 seconds. Alright, so this is definitely going to nerf healing quite a bit. 
um, for sure. But the cost to heal is 6 and 11, whereas it was 9 and 15. So 6 and 11, 5 compared to the 6 for the upgraded cost. So it's going to be easier to get this 14 seconds of healing out, and you're going to be able to cast a couple more heals, I believe, than you would typically. Uh, so I don't know. Kind of depends because... Uh, I don't know, we'll see how this actually affects it. I feel like this really doesn't make any difference, but, I mean, you still need healing. If you take away healing from most of the factions, it's going to immediately make so much of them, like, so much weaker, because uh, Empire versus the Vampire Counts with their healing and their Raised Dead mechanic being the way it was, uh, still very even. Uh, Raised Dead now and the upgraded version of it have an increased cooldown to 19 seconds from the 7 seconds, I believe it was. Let's go ahead and come over here and go Musion. You don't have it. Uh, let's see here. So raised dead being s five seconds. Oh god, I didn't realize that. Okay, so actually five seconds up to 19 seconds. So that's not that's not bad. You can still get like three units out in a minute, and then in another minute, another three units, and then 20 seconds. You know, one more. So very good stuff coming out of them. Still being able to raise dead quite uh, quickly over the course of the battle, very quickly. So you know. It's gonna, it's gonna make firing lines like the dwarves have a little bit more effective because you can't just instantly spam however many units you need to to absolutely cover up all their their, their uh, range units uh, like they could before. And uh, now the Reichland Ruin Fang was redesigned to be an AOE attack and a leadership buff for Call France. So let's go ahead and change this to the Empire. Where is the Empire? I'm blind. All right, here we go. Call France, right here. Oops. Like that. And. Reichland Rune Fang, so more splash damage, huh? Alright, so maybe this uh, plus 22% weapon damage will be added to the splash attack power, and it'll just be up to 38% weapon damage as far as splash is concerned, and then 18% weapon damage overall for armor piercing variety, excuse me. Uh, maybe. We'll see how that works out. Icon of Devotion, I have no idea where that even is. I, I don't even know. I don't even know who that's for. So, whatever. Uh, reduced to 12 uh, leadership, though, so... I, I don't know who that's for. I'm not gonna lie. Icon of Devotion? Maybe it's for Alberic. Uh, I don't know, but they did talk about the Wrath of Manon. And it was like right here, so. Wrath of Manon should now deal more damage to targets as detonation forces have been adjusted. Uh, not really a detonation for a Winds of Magic spell. So, um... Yeah, I don't... Uh, Alright. Whatever you say, CA. Yeah, okay. If it actually does more damage, cool. If not, uh, don't know what the hell you're talking about here then. Uh, Miss of the Lady has an added engaged in melee condition flag. So before, let's see what, what the Lady can do. Bretonia's right here. I'm already on it. Uh, the Miss of the Lady... Goddamn. Here we go. Miss of the Lady has a 30 meter range and just causes damage to combatants and minus 8 melee attack to anybody just within 30 meters. Meters, and you can just have her stuck behind the front lines, nowhere near combat, completely fine, full health, and just sitting there throwing out healing spells over and over. You can't see me, but I'm just like casting magic spells right here with my hands. You can't see it though. Uh, and she would just be draining the life of people so quickly because it takes out 15 HP every second. And like, she doesn't take any damage because she's so quick on her mount. She has a movement speed of 95. She can escape everything, pretty much, unless it's like a flying Pegasus or something like that coming after her. She's so quick. So it's just like... I think that's a good change. It makes me a little bit sadder, but you can pick and choose where you want to put her to try and avoid stuff, because obviously I'm not going to put her in a front line near where a Gorbul is, because as soon as, as, soon as that Gorbul just decides, I'm going to attack the lady, it can immediately just pull through the line. It doesn't need to be told you can't be pulled through, because it's just going to say, fuck you and pull through, and hit the lady right in her smug face. So... You know, this is a good change. That was a really good change because now people can't just draw kite and uh, like just continually just drain the the health of people, kind of like they can with the Mortis engine. But I mean, like her with a movement speed of 95 versus no vampire counts versus a movement speed for a Mortis engine of let's see what the Mortis engine has a movement speed of 50, which also can be poisoned and slowed down. Which I I, I had a game like that pretty recently. I thought where uh, it was on a live stream, so, you know, poisoning somebody and reducing their movement speed by 25%, so that, that's that's pretty much bringing that guy down to, like, a movement speed of, like, an infantry person for the Mortis engine, whereas she would still be faster than most heavy cavalry. And by light game, most of your light cavalry, I feel like, is going to be pretty dead, or gone, routed, whatever. 
So whatever. Cloak of Isha now has a small healing effect. So let's take a look at the Wood Elves again. Uh, Orion, Cloak of Isha. So 44% damage resistance. Not sure how it's going to work for the healing effect. We'll figure out if it's just like a little regeneration or added health and combat or just whatever. We'll see how it works out. And then Azag has the uh, Spider Banner replaced with Scroll. Uh, excuse me, goddamn. Azak has the spider banner replaced with scrolls and multiplayer. Uh, 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 I don't know how I feel about that. Cause sometimes I like to bring Azag even off the map. Because uh, going against like vampire counts or Bretonia and putting him on a on Skull Muncha is it's a risky pick. Cause almost every single lord that gets put on a like a dragon or a health steed could fight him off pretty pretty good. Because uh, you gotta think, he's gonna have the support of something uh, like Isabella von Karstein. God damn it, Isabella, come here. And then she has the Chalice of Potions. Not the Chalice of Potions, but the Chalice of Bathory, which does that crazy amount of healing, pretty much from like this to full. And then can like cast all sorts of spells to make him weaker, or just continually heal herself, or have like a vampire in the air on a, you know, Hellsty to help her out. It's. But I mean, like he gets he gets the spider bander on the the skull muncha, I guess, which or it doesn't get this. I mean, but uh, excuse me, wyvern still have poison damage, all of them do. But taking away that spider bander when he's on foot, I I don't agree with that personally. I feel like it should have been per mount option. So like if he wasn't on a wyvern, get rid of the spider banner. If he was on foot, keep the spider banner and give him scroll still. So let's take a look right here, Azag. So uh, because you know. Having poison at all times, it's pretty important. It's pretty important. It's, it's good stuff. Makes makes any lord better at uh, fighting anybody, pretty much. So, overall, though, that that is all of the changes. My voice is already feeling a lot more hoarse uh, from talking so much, but uh, you know, a lot, not a whole lot of changes as far as multiplayer is concerned. Very good changes, though, from what we've seen. So, uh, as always, guys, that's pretty much it. I hope y'all enjoyed me going over this with y'all. Uh, if you like what you saw, go ahead and leave a like. Subscribe if you want to see more. And as always, I'll catch y'all later.